about the game. I want to play the clip actually. This is from Nicky on, on, on DR Sports yesterday. Oh, I love um, it. Yeah, yeah, this this clip is amazing. Watson, left wing. That's mad. And you let Ben Rama and Fournel go. Yeah, That's but, what's but crazy. Why? Right, and, and, and Arsenal fans are pissing me off. I'm going to be honest. They're pissing me off. <laughs> That's fair because enough. everything that they ever do, is it, it seems to be set by a narrative that that they won't divert from. They, they, they're commenting me going, why are you so salty about Rice leaving? Have I ever been salty about Rice leaving? Me personally. Not you personally. No, 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 you never, personally. ever, ever. Not you personally. They don't know any other, anything else to say. They just go down one path and they say, oh, you're sorry, you're sorry. Who gives a shit? To be fair, we'll beat you, you already rice. twice. Oh. Yeah. No, 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 that is it. You, uh, well, you get the same amount of points for a 2 0 win as you do for a 6 0 win. <laughs> Listen, I, I know it's a bit of fun, right? I get it. But if, first of all, they're, they're calling out the Declan Rice thing because your fan base booed and none of you have called it out, right? That's why the Declan Rice thing happens. And Yes, you get three points for both wins, but one was a humiliation. So we can't sit here and pretend that getting beat 6-0 doesn't hurt yeah, more than getting beat 2-0. Yeah, of course right. it does. Of course it does. It's crazy. Their fans, are, their fans are salty as well, by the way. They really are. They hate the fact he's gone to Arsenal. They were begging him to go abroad or to Man City. Um, and he chose us and they can't hack it, man. They absolutely hate it. Um, and you know what? We never really had any form of rivalry with West Ham. A lot of the West Ham fans and Arsenal fans used to be all right. So it used to be quite funny to both laugh together at Tottenham, the fact that they don't win anything, etc. And also when West Ham won that European Conference League, they were started giving them, you know, we're, we're running around Tottenham with our European Cups and I've won a trophy, haven't you? So that's a good song, man. And it's funny. So everyone was laughing at it. But for some reason, the minute we bought Declan Rice, can't stand Arsenal, hate him. Now listen, West Ham fans, some of them have hated Arsenal forever, right? It's a London rivalry, etc. But for some reason, there's this severe hatred at the moment. And it was just beautiful to go to their ground and put six past them. And the number six goal has to be from Rice. It was an absolute, ah, oh, it's just a beautiful moment. And, you know, I, I, I get on really well. Dan Lauder says, LB knows on our channel. And we have a lot of banner. And last night's show was an absolute roasting for him. And, and fair play because he deserved it, man. He's getting cocky. He hate, he loved the fact that he'd beaten us twice. And uh, Declan Rice has basically shut all the fan base up. But I say that, classy guy, man. He went round, he clapped. There's about four fans left, by the way. But he went round and clapped the whole fan base that were left there and uh, and uh, and thanked them all. Because I think when you look at it, I can totally appreciate and understand where he's at and where some of the fan base is at. I've had it. When Fabregas has gone, when Alexis Sanchez has gone, when Van Persie's gone, I've been I've, I've hated it. But I've kind of understood it. I thought, you know what? Van Persie went and he won a trophy. Fabregas went, he won a trophy. Alexis Sanchez has gone. Thierry Henry has gone. Ashley Cole has won. They've all lifted trophies or done something successful with their careers after Arsenal. So I kind of... club does not match the ambition of yourself. You move on to a club that's more ambitious. And all of those players did that, right? And I think that's what Rice has done. He's won him a trophy for the first time as a captain. In 43 years, they finally lifted silverware. I think they should give, deserve to give him a little bit of respect. I understand they're not going to be going, I'm so pleased he went to Arsenal. I'm so happy. Of course they're not going to be. They're gutted he's gone, right? But some of the fans, I mean, the actual abuse and some of the stuff, calling him seeing next Tuesday, screaming about his family and his wife. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? Like, this is absolutely extreme. Yeah. I thought this guy was seen as a top player at West Ham. And I thought I was disrespectful. But you know what? He goes around and he claps the fans. Still, he could have gone straight down the tunnel. He could have celebrated his goal. He could have gone, no, nah, bollocks to you. You've given me a load of abuse for the last six months. I'm doing yeah. what I want. Fair play yeah. to him, man. Absolute yeah, quality Rice, player. Quality yeah, player. Rice handled himself with... With with such decorum at the at the weekend in terms of he's I mean his performance, yeah, outstanding. Just he's a top out player, of this man. out of this yeah. world, and you know he is he is. I know a lot of people at the start of the season were talking about Madison being the signing of the of the year, and I think part of that is due to him only costing forty million. But mm. for me, Declan Rice is that guy so far because he's he's the best player I've seen who's handled that hundred million price tag yeah. and above. He's just been so good, so consistent. I've said it all year, and I, you know we've done this. We, we've all been doing this show like three or four weeks together now. But I believed that your lack of pace to your game was a, was a preemptive move from from the manager and the team to reserve energy for the second half of the season. I always felt in the second half you, you would come alive and move the ball quicker, run faster. And you're talking marginal differences here, but Declan Rice has made you a calmer and much harder team to break down. And I stand by something Sir Alex Ferguson said all those years ago. Goals win you games, but defences win you titles. And although he doesn't play in your defence, what he now brings, stability-wise, with Saliba and Gabriel behind him, he's just out of this world. And he's going to surpass the amount of goals and assists that Granite Xhaka got last year as well, in my opinion. So that element of Granite Xhaka has also been replaced as well. He was just phenomenal at the weekend. And to go to your... 
your previous employer, your previous club, after losing to them twice already this season, with the media and everybody, imagine the headlines already for if you guys lost because of the over-celebrating and everything else. To handle all of that, Declan Rice demonstrated that he's a top-class to world-class player, and he may not wear the armband, but he's the best captain at your club as well. He's he's an absolute super... No wonder Pep Guardiola wanted him at Man City. He's an absolute... He's oh, ridiculous. Mate. I know if, if Man City they're... fans, and I, I don't know if LB is one of them, but I know Hugh and, and Big Steve and a few, the, other, the other ones and Daps, etc., that have said to me, like, oh, I'm so jealous that you got him and we did him, man. And I like, imagine him when Rodri's out, done. Where he plays with Rodri... He guarantees Man City another treble for me. Like honestly, that is, that is how important he would have been to Man City. I'm so glad that he didn't go there because it would have been good good night for football completely. I mean, it might even be that already. But Rice going to City just basically gifts them another another treble for me. And you know, Man City might win another treble, but for me, they're abs- he's that good man. And I always knew he was a good player. I never really wanted to say it too much because Man West Ham fans can get cocky. But I I honestly never watching him week in week out. Now I'm like. OK, yeah, I didn't know you were this good, man. I knew you were good for England and I knew you were good for West Ham, but this is scary. And like, you know, this isn't a dig at Jack Grealish whatsoever because he's won a treble and he's a top talent. But 100 million, you look at it and go, is he a 100 million pound winger? Nah, he's not. I know that to pay extra release clause, etc. But you kind of look at Rice and think, yeah, he's kind of justified why he's 105 million already in terms of how good he looks and how he's taken us to that. And I think when you look at like Caicedo and Enzo and all that, they're all still questioning Gannon. Is he worth that? No one's talking about the price tag of Declan Rice because he's been so good, man. And he deserves all the plaudits, man. He really does. Mm. I agree with that. I, LB I, is I, just I, like, yeah, I don't know what to say. Oh, listen, listen, I don't know what, what you want me to say. I mean, yeah, I wish we would have got him. Well, I wish we would have got Jude Bellingham first. Um, but then we didn't get Jude Bellingham because obviously he chose Real Madrid. Um, I wish we would have got Rice. Um, and obviously, yeah, I think Dan's right. I think if Rice would have come to City... We probably, obviously, you don't, you can't really say. I was going to say we probably don't lose the games against Arsenal and um, and Wolves. Not to say we would have won them, but obviously, Rodri was out. He could have just slotted into the six. You know, it could have been, it could have been game over. So, yeah, this is a great player. And Dan's right on the price tag as well. Like no one's really questioning the price tag. So, yeah, fair dues, man. It's been a good signing. And listen, this is what Arsenal have needed to do for some time. Be a serious football club. Do you know what I mean? Stop signing these thirty million pound players who keep on flopping, the Vieiras and that. Yeah, stop signing those players and start signing some top top talent. Yeah, so in the summer, go and sign a big striker. Go and get Tony Arashi, man. Don't mess around. Go and get him and get it done within the first couple of weeks of the transfer window if you can. Yeah, show your intent because Max. I I genuinely believe that winning a Premier League isn't just about who's got the best team. It's it's about the 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 the, the mental aspect of the game. It's about putting fear into the rivals, yeah. And and I always refer back to la- the last transfer window when we got to February the f- when we got to February the first, yeah, last year. And Arsenal had only signed Jorginho, Ch- uh, Trossard, and was it Kivio or someone like that. And I I knew February the first they've not done enough here. We c- we can catch them, yeah. This summer with, with with Arsenal when they signed Rice, I was like, damn, they're they're, they're being serious. I don't think they did quite enough in my opinion. Same with Liverpool. When they signed McAllister and Zobersly in the first couple of weeks of the transfer window, you, you, you're sitting there going, damn, these guys are serious. But then it kind of tailed off. I genuinely think football's much, not much more, but a large part of winning titles is about putting fear into your position. And you do that by intent and going buying some, some elite level players, man. So yeah, let's see what they've got in store for us this summer. Yes, and I, I I agree with that. And look, I, look City are still my favourites to win win the Premier League as it stands. I'm teetering every day, Liverpool, Arsenal. It, it's neck and neck between those two for me right now. I, I can't really separate separate the two, but I think it's going to go down to the wire. I really, I think by the end of the season, no more than six points is going to separate all three of those teams from top to to third or whatever it may be. But um, yeah, look, Arsenal. I think look, it, it's good for the league. Um, that, that they did what they did. But I love what you said there about intent because it's true. If the season ends, win, lose, or draw anything, and then, you know, within four or five days of the season ending, they've put £100 million bid in for Victor Rosherman and they've signed him or they've, they've gone and got Ivan Tony. It sends a message. And I think it's important to have your players for pre-season. I look at Rasmus Hoyland at United. He's finding his feet now. But the fact that he joined us partially injured without no pre-season... It's no good. Like they, you know, that deal should have been done, especially a player of his age, that he should have been in early. If it had been in in June, had a preseason, started the season fit, 
no doubt he'd have got even more goals by now. It's just that you're playing catch up with your fitness, catch up with the system, the pressure of being at a club such as that. And the more Arsenal, by the way, the more they compete and the better they get, the more pressure that's on them to, to maintain that as an example. So the quicker you get your business done, uh, the better. And yeah, you're right. But yeah, Declan Rice, what's a, what's a player? I mean, he looks cheap at 105 million. It genuinely looks cheap at 105 million uh, for how good he has been. Let's look at some of these super chats here. It says Rice waited uh, till they left to score. Respect. That's what Shane says. That must have been, for you as a gooner, that must have been poetic watching because it wasn't just a few hundred. It was 20-odd thousand that left when that fourth goal went in. It was class, man. And it was funny because Lawless was going, oh, they've only got to go and get a burger at the concourse. He'll be back. Well, then that burger that burger must be bloody good because they didn't bother coming back. Yeah. So oh. uh, it was quite funny. The concourse, no, they're gone, they're gone to get, they, some of them were going, maybe going Westfield to get some food, did a bit of yeah, shopping. They were gone, mate. Uh, I say it was gone. crazy. It was beautiful to see, man. And like, what a crumble from West Ham within 15 minutes. I mean, 4 0. Honestly, it could have been about it could have been about 10 or 11. It was that one sided. It's the worst team that we have played in the history of me watching Arsenal. It was that bad. We've played some awful teams, by the way. They were worse than Sheffield United, man. We beat them 5 0 with the Emirates. They were worse than them. It was absolutely shocking. They give up, they crumbled, the players a mess. Moyes' tactics. They're playing Ben Johnson on the, as a left winger. I mean, what the hell was going on there? You know, Kudus, don't know what happened to him. Bowen, what happened to him? You know, people are telling me they've got a better front three than Arsenal. Um, clearly not when Paquetta's out because they look terrible. Um, the whole team was an absolute sham. It really was. And yeah, I don't know what happened to them defensively. They were a mess. I mean, Aguerd and Zuma were just getting done. And Saka, that's 100 goals and assists now at 22 at Arsenal. In phenomenal record for a young lad who's having a really shocking season, apparently, with 10 goals, 7 assists. If that's a shocking season, I can't wait for him to have a good one again because he is a top talent, mate. Gabriel, very underrated, under the radar. People not talking about him enough. He's been an absolute monster this season. Uh, and and Erdegaard was pulling the strings, man. Trossard in that position looked very good. A lot of good performances from Arsenal, but a lot of people will say about how bad West Ham were and Wrexham could have beaten them 6-0. was nothing to do with Arsenal. Now we played well, man, and we deserve our credit. So, uh, yeah, man, on to the next. Absolutely. Uh, Pep is massively emotional. He has uh, outbursts each year. Probably does, yeah. Yeah, yeah he does. He is emotional. Uh, Haaland, getting off the get, you know, get, and then his drought at the weekend. We were all getting worried about him, thought he'd fallen off. <laughs> <laughs> Wild boy. He didn't play a game for like two months. He's still top top Premier League goal scorer, man. I know. Honestly, some people. That, that, when I heard commentators saying that, he hasn't scored for two months. I mean, yeah, but most of that he's been out. It's sometimes, you know, a player scores in April and that, the last goal might be in April. They don't score in May. And then they have the summer off and they're injured in the first two months. And it's October and they say, he hasn't scored for six months. So he's, he's only been available for like four weeks of that, you mugs. It's, mm-hmm. Sometimes they really do like drag those stats out a little bit. Uh, will Dan back Mikel Arteta now? Clearly one of the best in the Premier League. What does he mean back now? What does that? What to want to go and buy a season ticket and start going to games and start actually going and watching the team? Or what does he mean? Are you Arteta out? Every game? There's not an Arteta route or Arteta in. I've always said this, man. We're Arsenal win. It's not about whether you want him in and out every week. I don't get it. For me, until I'm proven otherwise, I still don't think this guy can get us across the line. I still think he might be the nearly there, man. I'm not going to change that because we've beaten West Ham 6 0 now, right? But if he can go and win a Champions League or a Premier League title, and prove to the people that doubt him, the people that aren't sure or have concerns about him, then of course, people will get on the on, on, on behind him and say, wow, he's done a great job to allow us to compete. Absolutely. But I want to win stuff. I don't just want to be there or thereabouts. And he needs to win something this season for me to prove that he can get us across the line. That's going to be very difficult now because we've been out the domestic cups. So for me, there needs to be context as to why we haven't won something. And if it is that we've got to a Champions League final and we've been been out on penalties by Man City or we've lost 1-0 or whatever it be, then fair play. If we get Man City to the last game of the season and they pip us, there's context as to why you want to, might want to keep Mikel Arteta. But if we go out mm. to Porto and we lose behind Ange Postacoglu Spurs and come fourth, are you telling me that we have to back this manager and get behind him? Maybe he ain't going to be that guy to take us across the line. But there's certainly good things he's done, man. 100%. That's the way I'm at. And... You know, for me, there's definitely context in football. It's not like win the league or go. You know, North Side and League Honor are different. They want us to win or get out of it. That's fine. That's an opinion. There's some people that just want to keep with him. He will do it. Doesn't matter if it takes him 10 years. I'm protecting this guy and I'm behind him the whole way. I'm in the middle. I'm like, win me something and prove that you are the guy to get us across the line. Otherwise, I'm going to have my reservations and concerns that you can do it. That's where mm. I'm at, bro. 
Makes sense. Uh, this year says Rice decided to remove the hammer from his arsenal and use a cannon into the top corner to send the rest of the hammers home early for <laughs> Pi and Mash. I like that super chat, Peter. That's very good. Big up, Peter. Granite here says that let them hate. It's fun. We all got we all we all we got we all, we all, we all, we all need. need. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we all got what we all need. Yeah. Sorry, that done my dyslexia right in there. That no, means. that's all right. <laughs> What's that? Six. What's that? Read that? Six. Six tuple. Like seven tuple. Fifty tuple is a fairy tale, tale, my friend. Mm. Do we get mean? that? I don't, no, know I don't get that one. I don't get it. But thank you for super chat. I appreciate. It. 